What's up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here again uh, this morning. This is part two to the video that I did yesterday, that I posted yesterday. Um, I'm not too sure exactly where I left off, but I just wanted to continue because I did the phone. What happened yesterday was, it's a little cold this morning. Um, what happened yesterday was the phone cut off so I was not able to finish the video so I said you know what since it cut off so abruptly I think it would be right for me to come and do another video and I just so this video is gonna be a lot shorter than the one yesterday right I just want to just to continue to encourage you guys right most of the the conversation was revolved around identity and as mentioned in the previous video, I talked about, you know, my background as far as, you know, yes, black, but growing up in the Caribbean and of course growing up in Brooklyn, New York, you know, having different experiences, you know, or expressions or interpretations of what it means to be black, not only in America, but in this world, right? Dealing with other people's worldviews and expectations and etc etc starting in your own household right this was where you know the, i believe the core of my message was uh uh was stemmed from right the uh, starting in your household you as a child you as a man you as a woman right everything that you are started in your household whether it was a whether it was a whole household meaning you know everything was in order you know what i'm saying you had parents who did their best and lived a life a godly life and thus passed that on to you right or you lived in a broken a broken house a broken home and you did not you know what i'm saying you didn't have the fortunate opportunities or the things that you know we can both agree on that are necessary in rearing a child in in, in a godly fashion not saying that you know, you can you can do all the right things and a child will still do and live how he wants to live, but it doesn't take away from the sacrifices and just the standard of living that parents who actually do the right thing, you know what I'm saying, who rely on the living God to help them raise a godly household, you know, the men of God, the, the leaders who have decided, you know, you know what I'm saying, to do the right thing to be to get married to have children in you know to have children according to god's intention according to his design for marriage like we should not not celebrate these individuals who actually did the work and i think there's a lot of people celebrating you know what i'm saying people have no problems in celebrating slackness they have no problems in celebrating waywardness they have no problem in celebrating things you know what i'm saying that involves around that revolves around lust and especially with the song that was recently released no one is saying that you, you can't you know the WAP song right not saying that you know if you if you want to be a WAP or if you want to live that WAP lifestyle then do that right no one is I know you know from a biblical perspective we're not condemning anybody um, for living the way that they choose however um, we all have a, a freedom right freedom to create a life or to live a life that is pleasing to us right i feel like every human being should have the freedom to live a life that is pleasing to them and also be free to ce uh, celebrate that life so if you can celebrate your wop or if you can celebrate you know whatever it is that you do sexually and feel like everyone is supposed to be on you know to, to support you then why shouldn't someone who chooses to live righteously and to ch and, and who chooses to live a life that you know is biblical is led by the holy spirit righteous and holy why should that person be condemned by an evil world or by a world who claims to want to be accepted and, and have acceptance and to be valued and respected why should these same people now turn the finger on individuals who are, are trying to do the right thing trying to live righteously yes there there is righteous living and there is wayward living this is not you know there is no there's a distinction there is, there is, there, it's not the same. And we've all, you know, have, have had our experiences with wayward living and things like that before, you know, for me, before I knew the Lord, um, who the Lord, Lord, like I knew that I always believed in God, but I never had an, ex, an experience 
with the Lord, Lord, until he came into my life and started to clean me up. And so, yeah, the things that I desired before, the ways that I used to live, what I thought, what was, you know, the things as far as my interests, my mindset, that has changed and will continue to change. I will continue to flourish according to God's plans for my life, according to the mindset that I have in Christ. And so, yeah, there are people who are going to persecute that. There are people who are going to feel some type of way about it because you're not engaging. And most times when people say, you know, oh, when, most times I notice what I've, what I've noticed recently is that when people, um, you know, want to point a finger and say, oh, this person is judging or whatever, most times no one is judging. It's just their own guilt and the condemnation that they're experiencing and they're trying to project that onto somebody else. You'll notice that most times when a Christian is or a believer or a follower of Christ truly, who's following Christ, when they speak on certain things, they're, they're speaking of a lifestyle. They're speaking of most times their truth and the things that God has, you know, did for them. And just, again, just the, the, the standard of living, high living that Christ made available to us. So I don't understand, you know, why most times, you know, you talk, you, you know, like I said before, people don't have a problem with you being slack, being vulgar, you know what I'm saying? Being all types of wayward, right? They don't have a problem with that. But the minute you stand up or, 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 or set a standard, for righteous living or you know what i'm saying or just not you may not even be perfectly righteous right because at the end of the day we are all pressing forward to that perfect identity to that perfect call to that perfect image that we have been restored in in christ and we have to work towards it it takes work it's not you know you just sit on your behind and think okay well you're just going to be transformed i mean if you have that type of faith you know glory to god and, and blessings to you but we have to work for this transformation we have to work to have our minds renewed we have to work you know what i'm saying against again the the the, the ways of the world trying to corrupt and, and 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 pervert the minds of god's children and so if that is a strategy of the enemy you know when someone is decides to do right when someone decides to live right you know here comes the enemy trying to Put pressure on that person. Put put pressure on that child of God. You know what I'm saying? Through people, through the music, through media, through family, through situations that, you know, again, will make someone say, you know what, is it even worth it? That's when you have to even press in even more and say, you know what? I don't care come hell or high water. I don't care what it is. I am pressing forward into that perfect image. I'm pressing forward to, the, to achieving that perfect call. I'm pressing forward you know what I'm saying? To receiving that life. So going back, and I'm going to conclude this video, going back to what I was saying about the video yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Just knowing how people, men, especially men who you've experienced a life of, of sexual perversion, starting from childhood, maybe you've been, you, you had an unfortunate ex, uh, sexual experience, at, you know, during your childhood, or you may have inherited, you know, certain sins. Certain sins are generational. Certain sins, Yes, they pass down. If you if you pay attention to certain things in your family, you'll see if you if you're fortunate enough to have your eyes open to the situation with that I'm about to explain, you'll see that certain even if you pay attention to like your bloodline, whether it's addiction, division, um certain sexual perversions, uh, uh certain sexual perversions, whether it's adultery, fornication, same-sex sexual attraction right according to the biblical standard according to the biblical worldview this is not a, a a cultural worldview this is not a worldview that is rooted in lust and deception this is a biblical worldview this is the standard that the living god set for his people so that they can have a frame of reference to adhere to that is outside of themselves so that when we're going the wrong way when the enemy comes with his schemes and his plans we can latch on to the word of God. We can latch on to the things that he says we are to have and to become. So to you guys out there, you men out there who, you know what I'm saying, you may have, you, you have suffered in silence for however long, you know what I'm saying, with the sexual experiences that you, that you went through as a child, which opened you up to other sexual experiences that you had no business being involved in, whether that is same sex attraction um, or sex with any, anything that walked, you know? Sometimes, again, the enemy is so conniving and so deceptive is that he and i'm going to turn this video around real quick so you can get a better lighting here this is better the enemy is so deceptive is that he will lead you into sin 
he will lead you into feeling like the sexual sins that you're living in that it's, it's nothing wrong with it and here you have you know the pride movement etc etc people you know what i'm saying forcing and trying to make people value you know what it is that uh they believe in if you believe that if you and this is real simple if you believe that being home and i don't like using the term gay because i believe that the term gay means happy that's another another teaching on you know the works of the enemy and how he perverts god's beautiful things for selfish reasons for the human pride i don't use the term gay because gay means is it's happy that's that's the term that i that i like to use you know what i'm saying when i'm uh, i'm using that term so i'm gonna say same sex homosexual right bisexual you know what i'm saying whatever sexual sexuality you practice outside of a man and a woman now no one is condemning you if you're feeling condemned don't feel condemned listen i i can speak on this because again this culture likes to make people feel bad about what it is that they do or how they choose to live and at the end of the day no one has a heaven or hell to put you in only the spirit of god and his grace can deliver you from whatever it is that you're dealing with whatever spiritual oppression emotional oppression mental physical oppression that you're dealing with only the spirit of god can um deliver you and and and, and set you anew and and, and and give you a new life right so there are always going to be people who come against or oppose god's power oppose his abilities oppose his proven miracles that he's been doing from since the beginning of time but you cannot stop that from having you access freedom you cannot stop that from having you live in the peace and the joy and 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 having the life life more abundantly think about this think about the shame and disgrace that's associated with uh think about excuse me guys think about the shame and the, and the disgrace that even though there's pride and all these different things that people promote and they, they try to be so confident you're so confident in your sexuality yet still you're out here trying to force people to believe in in in, in, in what it is that you desire or in in another case try to f uh, oppress people or force people into believing that there's something that they're not not everyone who is creative not everyone who may have effeminate tendencies not everyone who may talk or walk a certain way is a homosexual is gay that's another topic another conversation that i'm going to talk about you know that has kept that has made so many children accept identities about themselves you know things about themselves as i once did because I was different, because no one could have understood who I was or who God created me to be. And that's just what the world does. Anytime they can't create, if, if someone can't define you or understand you, they're gonna put a label on you. And if you are not aware of who you are, if you don't understand that your uniqueness, your complexities, everything about you, as similar as it may be to stereotypes or, or whatever else is out there, that you are a child of God. Only God can define you. And the moment you understand that truth and begin to let go of just the lies and the deception that the enemy has caused in our society to have people believe and become things that they are not. Your words are powerful. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. The enemy knows that when you speak, evil knows that when you speak something, when you speak into a child or when you say or speak words of a child, good or ugly words, that, root, that, that word begins to take root right that word begins to manifest in that child and some part or somewhere out there uh, somewhere along the line that child begins to live that life spoken over them that is why it's so important for you to again going back shout outs to the parents to the amazing parents the godly parents who sacrificed and served the lord and was faithful you understand what i'm saying to raise their children the godly way the way outlined in, in the bible regardless if those kids you know you know what i'm saying didn't follow true once they did if you did it if you were a parent and you did what you were supposed to do for your ch for your child based con you know you believing this in your heart believing that wholeheartedly like you did the right thing god bless you and you know at the end of the day god is going to turn on everything for the good of those who love him so you don't even have to worry about whatever decisions that you that your children made that was just like like what happened like where did i go wrong you know if you did right and god knows so yeah so you know what i'm saying so so many men so many black men right and again going back to the caribbean and the american experience black a caribbean and black american experience so many men right have been living in bondage 
and living lies just so that they don't have to deal with the shame and the disgrace of being something or becoming something that they didn't even want to become. A lot of people are living homosexual lives or sexually perverted lives because they didn't think that they had a choice. They felt like if this is who someone says they are, some of you guys, your mothers and your fathers have called you the derogatory name they use to, to describe a homosexual, the F word. I'm not even going to say it, say it. Just like I won't say the N word that describes black people because those are disgusting words. Those are evil words birthed from the kingdom of darkness created to control people, created to have people subscribe to identities and to ultimately live lifestyles that they should not be living. If you're living, if you're a child of God and you're living a life that is outside of God's plan for you, you're living in oppression. I want you to know that. I'm going to rephrase that. I'm going to say that again. If you are a child of God, if you know in your heart, whether you've had the revelation of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or whatever, if you've yet to have that deeper revelation, I speak that you will have that revelation starting today in Jesus' name. But if you have not, if you just believe that, you know, there is a higher power or a highest power, just like I did before I got a deeper revelation. If you're living outside of God's will for your life, if you're living outside of God's plan for your life, you are living in oppression because you were created intentionally as the word of god talks about fearfully and wonderfully made so if you're living outside of god's plans for your life of outside of his identity him who is pure righteous and holy and perfect he makes no mistakes if you are living outside of that right we're not taking into account the sinful nature because we all inherit sin as as part of the the, the portion that we've inherited from our, our ancestors when they disobeyed god in the garden of eden that you know this uh sin is a uh, is an uh, is an inheritance that we all inherit in some way form or another right and so that's why you should never let anybody sin right just like i was saying before if if if, if you want to be slack and wayward maybe that's your sin and, and, and or something that you have to work out just like we all have to so that you become the full manifestation of who god says we are as his righteous and holy people right but when you have again so like i was saying when you're living outside of god's plans for your life you are being oppressed whether you know it or not so i don't care what they say about you know be yourself or be yourself or have all these different pride movements that at the end of the day no one can define you no one has a movement to put you in no one can tell you nothing about who you are when they don't even know who they are themselves you have people out here advocating for people and you know and movements and they don't even know who they are they don't even know themselves like that makes no sense it's just confusion and deception so like i was saying i know who are you know i'm knowing I, I i've been knowing more clearly who i've been called to and i just want to speak to my brothers my brothers out there who you know you've just been downtrodden you've just been a you know a puppet you've just been you know just a a, a vessel of 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 you know of the works of the enemy right not being able to be tr not being able to be yourself according to god's definition of who you are not according to your sin not according to those people who spoke those evil words around you not according to those experiences that you experienced as a child as a child that opened you up to things that you had no business being open uh, open up to not because of the, the the you know the double life or whatever that you've been living because you just didn't have the confidence or the courage to be you or to accept whatever your sinful nature is. Listen, we all have. That's why, again, going back to the WAP movements and things like that. And I keep referring, I, I, I keep saying WAP because that it's current. It's current with, you know, what's going on. And, and it's giving you hopefully an insight as to, you know, sin and, 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 and the pride of sin and, you know, and feeling like you need people to accept your slackness or your waywardness or to validate it so you don't have to wear it on your sleeves or you have to just be so overt and and abrasive about it that is just like you know you you want you you're trying to prove a point it's just like if that's what you like if, if you have that if you have a wop then that should be between you and your dude that should be between you and your husband that should be between you and the person that you're sleeping with whoever it is you understand what i'm saying the whole world don't need to know that you don't gotta wear it on your sleeves you understand what i'm saying and it's just like, but if even if you do, so be it. You have the freedom to express yourself. You have the freedom to create your own world. And whoever wants to subscribe to it, let them subscribe. 
But I'm talking to the people right now. I'm talking to my brothers and my sisters. You know what I'm saying? Because we all are humans at the end of the day. We were all birthed from a spirit or the spirit. And so we may have, it may, we may look different on the outside, but truly inside, we are so alike. And so to you as well, you know, if you, sister, you may have a son or, a, you know, a friend or a brother or even maybe a husband or a boyfriend that you may be feeling, you know what I'm saying, may you instinctually or intuitively you may discern that they're hiding something sexually from you about their sexual identity and who they are if if a man has to hide to you as his wife you know who he is that's not really his problem that's your problem because clearly there's something that you've revealed to him there's something that you're saying something that you said maybe how you act around certain people or certain men have shown to him that you are not someone who is as loving as you may think you are you're not someone who is as compassionate as you think you are and so this man who you're sleeping in bed with has to lie to you about who he is or the sins that he's struggling with when y'all could get both come together get on your knees you know pray but if 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 if, if it ain't working out you can get the you know permission from the god who joined who who you made a covenant with that to to what is it what is the covenant lord through thick and thin no that's not the covenant um life or death right till the end you are going to stay with that person if you know you and god you know you god and your in your husband y'all come together and i don't even know why i'm going into this but let the holy spirit lead um if y'all have decided that you know what i'm saying that it's not going to work that he doesn't want to change his his secret life or whatever then you could be about your business you could go about your way and 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 receive the man the, the, the man, regardless of his past, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, God gives all of us the opportunity to change. That's that's what I was saying before, is that when you receive God's grace, it takes work. You now have to work towards renewing your mind, towards becoming the new creature in Christ that He um uh, that God prepared for you to be in Christ. However, some people don't want to work. Some people like being where they're at. They like, you know what I'm saying, living the life that they live and no one should have to suffer because of that. No one should have to deal, you understand what I'm saying, with the choices of another, right? Especially when you're not married. It's just like, why should you have to deal with the, the, the decisions of another person when you're not married or when you're not living in the same household as your parents or whatever? There comes a certain point where it's just you and the Lord and it's just like, okay, if anything, anything that you allow, then God is going to allow it. Anything that you don't allow, God is going to shut the door on it. And once you come into that revelation, there's so much freedom in that. And so I want you to know out there again, I keep saying this. I want you to know, brother, that you don't have to be subjected to the lies, to the oppressive ways, to the words that was sp uh, spoken over you. You don't have to live in hiding. You don't have to pretend to be something that you're not. You don't have to, you know what I'm saying, create a life or to, or to entertain ugly, you know, people. You know what I'm saying? Just to be perceived a certain way. When I say ugly people, I mean, listen, there are men who, who are literally entertaining unattractive women just because they want to appear sexually, you know, that, that they're straight, that they're heter heterosexual. Like why, like, why even do that? Like, if you're not attracted to a woman, if you're not attracted to a person, you should not have to sleep with them because you're trying to have them see you a certain way or you're trying to communicate a certain image to certain people. Like... Listen, everyone is not beautiful. Everyone is not beautiful. That's the truth. Everyone is not beautiful. There are some ugly people. There are some ugly in spirit, ugly physically, bad in spirit, bad physically. Like, it is what it is. But we have a Lord. We have a Savior who redeems people, who restores people, who beautifies people, who changes people from the inside and out. It is what it is. Like, you are, what you are on the outside is who you are on the inside. So if you're ugly on the inside, it's going to show on the outside. You understand what I'm saying? If you're bad on the inside, it's going to show in your actions on the outside. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not even about physical looks because you can have unconventional or untraditional features when it comes to what the beauty standard is and still be beautiful and still be beautiful. So it's not even about that. It's about your spirit. And I'm here to set the captives free. I know my tone and my voice has changed and it will continue to change because I've been growing in my identity. In Christ, I've been growing in my relationship with the Lord and he's given me much boldness, much more courage, and much more revelation to speak candidly and honestly about who, about who I am, who he's called me to. 
and the life that is available to those of you who are willing to leave it all, surrender it all, return to your first love. Some of you who have backslid, some of you who have allowed shame and disgrace to have you walk with your head held low to remind you that God is love, that he does not condemn. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ to know that God already knew what we would have done, what we were going to do. And he already made a way for us to be restored, to be redeemed, to be forgiven and to get back on the path to where he has called us to be. Do not live one more day in oppression. Do not live one more day according to the expectations of another person, good, bad, or, in, or ugly. But live truly in the freeness, in the freeness, in the freedom, in the peace, in the joy, in the life. You know what I'm saying? You can be the father that, you know what I'm saying, that you didn't have. You can be the husband that your mother never, that, 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 you, that, that your mother did not have and you weren't able to see, to know how to be a husband, to how to be a father. You understand what I'm saying? You can be the leader of your household and you don't have to be it according to perversion. You don't have to be that according to someone else's acceptance or what they think is worthy. You don't have to be in a same-sex relationship raising a child. You don't have to do that. Like, you don't. You don't. If you want your sexual wholeness to be restored, according to how God intended for you before the foundations of the world, before the fall of mankind, before sin, you can have that. You can have that. If you can trust God to heal, if you believe God heals people, God restores people in whatever it is that they're going through, whether it's sickness, disease, whatever, believe that God can also restore your sexual identity. Believe that he can also give you a new name. Believe that he can also transform you from the inside out holistically. And stop letting these people who the enemy is using keep you down and have you feeling shame for the things that you've, that you've done and for the life that, you, that you're living in secret. Okay, let the light shine on you and let the love of God remind you of his grace and his mercy that no heaven or no, 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 no demon in hell, no demon in, in the seas. You understand what I'm saying? No weapon, right? No weapon from the, from the forces of evil can stop you from becoming who God created you to be. So receive, receive your inheritance today in the name of Jesus. Receive the mind of Christ today in the name of Jesus. Re receive that you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind if you are a born again believer in the name of Jesus. Receive that God is love and that he wants you to win. And win you shall. Stay connected. Corwin L. Gilliams. Check out my website, CorwinLGilliams.com. If you're someone who's you're needing, you know, coaching services or whatever, I do email coaching, I do one-on-one, -on -one, and I do video conference. If you're interested, C-O-R-W-I-N-L-G-U-I-L-L-I-A-M-S.com. Also, you can email me at Corwin at CorwinLGilliams.com. Email me, you know, we can talk, you can send me some questions, whatever it is, whatever it is that you're dealing with, and you, you know what I'm saying? and you feel I can be of help, of, a, of assistance to you, let me know. Um, and we're going to get this ball going. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tell the truth and shame the enemy. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to get you, my brothers, men of God, back to who you are, back to who you were. Some of you guys were confident, young, strong, uh, young boys, you know what I'm saying? And, and the world tried to get you to compromise and to get you to and try to break you so that you become everything else, all the other weaklings who didn't have a voice or mind of their own. You know what I'm saying? And it worked for a time, but the time has come for you to be restored. The time has come for you not to walk into the fullness as to who you are according to truth and to have the confidence and the courage to let go everything and anything that is stopping you from becoming who God created you to be. From liter And I'm serious. They're gonna, there's going to be a time where you have to let go people. You're going to have to let go situations. You're going to have to let go environments of people who refuse to see you the way that God sees you and wants to hold you in contempt they want to hold you in the bondage that they themselves are unwilling to be freed from they want to hold you according to their worldviews they want to hold you according to their mindsets they want to hold you according to their perceptions so that they continue to walk over you and keep you under the, under their feet right but like i said the days for that are done so with that being said, my beautiful people, I pray this message was a blessing to you. And if you are, again, interested in knowing more of what I do, check out my website. If you are on Facebook, I am at CLG Speaks, C-L-G S-P-E-A-K-S, -S -E CLG Speaks on Facebook. On Instagram, at, I'm at Corwin L. Gilliams. I'm going to be using more of my Facebook platform more frequently now because I believe that's virtually where I'm, I feel like I'm called to. And I, and, I, and, I, and I like Facebook better. It seems to work more uh, conducively, if that's a word, to what I'm building. So 
follow me, like I said, on Facebook. At this point, my personal page, Corwin L. Gilliams, is full to the max. I feel like I'm at the max. I believe I'm, I'm at the max of, you know, the amount of friends. I believe it's 5,000 friends um, you can have on your personal page. So you'll have to follow me on my, on my professional page, right? And from there, we'll, we'll, we'll take it on. Any questions, like I said, anything, anything that you're dealing with, any concerns, anything that I can help you with based off of what I talked about in this video and all the videos that you can you know, uh, watch, you know, if you were to check out my, um, my social media, please do not be afraid. I'm going to keep your information confidential. I won't discuss, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to use no names or nothing like that. If you email me, understand that I'm going to keep that confidential. I'm not going to, if I do use a question or make a statement or something on my platforms, I'm not going to say who it's from. I'm not going to use your email. I'm not going to identify you, but I do need to hear your voice. I do need to hear, you know, the things that you're dealing with. I do need to hear different perspectives. I do need to hear experiences. I do, you know, that does encourage me. It does let me know, you know, that I'm doing the right thing. Not that I'm going to stop, not that it di dictates what I'm going to do, but it does encourage me. So please email me again, C-O-R-W-I-N at C-O-R-W-I-N-L-G-U-I-L-L-I-A-M-S dot com. All right. So, right now i'm going i'm heading i haven't had mcdonald's in a while so i'm going to um i don't know i feel for some mcdonald's i've been doing the healthy thing for a little bit but i have like a desire for some mcgriddles and something so i'm gonna see if i can get it i don't know if even know if this mcdonald's is allowing people to go in but um we'll see all right y'all so again i'll talk to you guys soon um all right. God bless. Love y'all. Truly.